When it comes to rare earths, as far as the Canadian capital markets go, there has been a lot of flash in the pans, aka quick pump and dumps that have worked to extract investor capital to fund many lifestyles. But before the space got all hot and bothered, there was a name that was quietly slugging away at developing their project for over half a decade. That project now has a rather enticing pre-feasibility study at a time when rare earths have been named as a mineral critical to national security. Let's dive in. We, of course, are referring to Defense Metals, a venture-listed issuer that this week put out a pre-feasibility study on their flagship Washita project, which is found near Prince George, British Columbia. The study is said to establish the project as one of the most advanced undeveloped rare earth projects in the West, which is a big deal with the current geopolitical climate. So what does the study look like? The pre-feasibility study outlines an after-tax net present value of $992 million and an IRR of 18.9% for the project which is based on a discount rate of 8%. Taxes seem to eat up an unusual amount of cash flows here, however, with the pre-tax MPV pegged at $1.8 billion, while the pre-tax IRR sits at 24.6%. The study is based on a projected mine life of 15 years for an open pit operation that is expected to send roughly 5,000 tons per day to a flotation concentrator. That concentrator is said to create a high-grade concentrate that contains about 50% total rare earths, which is based on recovery rates of 81%, a rate of recovery that we're told is unusually high for a rare earths project, but is thanks in part to the geology of the area. From the concentrator, the product will then be processed at Defense Metals' own hydrometallurgical and solvent extraction separation process facilities, which will create a final mixed rare earth carbonate product high in neodymium and praseodymium, which is referenced in terms of NDPRO equivalent, the scientific short form for neodymium praseodymium oxide. Anyways, this final product, referred to as MREC, is said to be critical to high growth permanent magnet applications, and magnet applications are said to represent over 95% of the rare earth market, so this is fairly significant. Okay, so let's get into the specifics a bit here. This isn't exactly gold or silver, so there's a bit more to understand about the pre-feasibility study. Bear with us. From a financial perspective, the operation seems rather expensive. The project needs $1.4 billion in initial capital to get everything in place, which leads to Washita having a payback period of about 3.7 years. That initial capital outlay is because of the multiple layers of processing required to get a final product that the market actually wants. First, a high-grade mineral concentrate has to be created at the flotation concentrator, as we previously mentioned, to get all of the rare earths out of the ore and into a single solution. Then, the concentrate is sent to a second facility on site, where the hydrometallurgical and solvent extraction separation process takes out all of the lanthanum and most of the cerium simply because those rare earths aren't really wanted by the market. This then establishes a final product that is 87.3% neodymium and praseodymium by weight, which is also 0.6% dysprosium and 0.2% terbium. Other rare earths exist in this mixed rare earth concentrate, but these four minerals are where the value lies. So that's all defense metals factored into their calculations. Aside from initial capital costs, operating costs are estimated at $165 million a year, which equates to about $37.42 per kilogram of NDPRO equivalent in that mixed rare earth concentrate product. From a production standpoint, the operation is expected to have a mining production rate of 8.7 million tons per annum, with grades over the life of the mine expected to be about 2.4% TRIO and a strip ratio of 3.3 to 1. Washita is expected to produce 62,500 tons per year flotation concentrate, which after further extraction is expected to lead to just 4,400 tons per year of NDPR oxide contained within the MREC. That MREC is again expected to be 87% neodymium and praseodymium over the life of the mine. In short, up to 8.7 million tons of ore will be mined every year to produce just 4,400 tons of final saleable product. For context, the entire feasibility study is based on an average price of $136.30 per kilogram of NDPRO equivalent. But even that price seems a bit confusing. So much so that Defense Metals had a subsection in their news release just trying to attempt to explain the pricing for the concentrate, which is clear as mud. 
They used an analyst that stated that the current price of NDPR oxide is about $63 a kilogram, which is expected to rise to $70 to $110 a kilogram by the late 2020s. But the lack of available rare earths is expected to maybe push prices higher, above inducement levels to $100 to $150 per kilo in the long term. That part is straightforward. But then Defense Metals says that given the high amounts of NDPR in its final product, the average MREC price per kilogram for the Washita project is $70.40 per kilogram of MREC, which is the equivalent of $116.50 per kilogram of contained total rare earths and the equivalent of $136.30 per kilogram of contained NDPRO. In other words, $63 a kilogram somehow equals $136 a kilogram, and quite frankly, that math ain't math in for us right now. The fine print, however, suggests that that might be related to the final MREC product actually being a carbonate rather than an oxide, resulting in this confusing math problem due to results being provided in oxide equivalents. Look, we're more financial analysis types over here than science types at the dive, so if one of our viewers has a straightforward answer to this, please hit us up in the comment section. Anyways, the project has a break-even point of $67.60 a kilogram for NDPRO, so that's the number that matters the most. Despite the high initial capex required to get Washita off the ground, the project does benefit from nearby infrastructure that does lower production costs. Being 80 kilometers to the southeast of Prince George, the property has most basic infrastructure that is needed. Power is to come from a new nearby high voltage transmission line that is found just to the west of the property, while existing forestry roads from Bear Lake will be upgraded to support mine site access. Water access is also not an issue, but perhaps the most enticing aspect of infrastructure is the Canadian National Railway, which passes through Bear Lake and can be used to supply processed plant reagents and consumables. It's the only line that passes through all three major petrochemical centers in North America and at the same time services port facilities in Port Rupert. In other words, it's ideal for both bringing in supplies and shipping out the final product. As one last point, it should be stated that the study also established a mineral reserve of 25 and a half million tons of mineable ore containing 2.43% total rare earth oxides. Mineral resources amounted to 29.2 million tons of ore containing 2.27% trio and inferred resources of 5.5 million tons of 1.42% trio. In other words, there's plenty of rare earths here, and it seems to be economic to boot. Now look guys, these esoteric metals are probably the hardest ones to cover. You can probably see I'm struggling just to get through this video with all these words that I'm not used to saying, but there are space that if you've made it this far into the video, you're probably taking a hard look at and you're trying to figure out how do I play rare earths as the world continues to deglobalize? What does it mean for projects like the Defense Metals Washita project? And I think that if you are doing your homework in this space, well, you're probably looking in the right place. Now, I, I don't know if this project's ultimately going to go to production, and I don't know if it's going to be a success. But I do know this. These are the names that we should be looking at and doing our homework on. So if you have any thoughts on this project, please let us know in the comments section because we're learning as well as we're doing this due diligence and trying to figure out what's going on here. So any feedback you have for us or any thoughts you have on the project, we really appreciate all the comments we get. And also all the engagement we've been getting lately means the world to us. We got a big staff that works on these videos and they are all a really big part of this. And I gotta say, they all get really jazzed when you guys take the time to say kind things or just give us any general feedback. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please give us a like. Thanks everybody.